everybody. Namaste. Today I have a really special treat for you because you get to meet my dear friend, Alex Chappelle. Alex is a student as well. She's in the 100-hour yin yoga teacher training. And as you are about to see, she's really, really warm and beautiful and talented and just exudes um, affection for the yin practice. So I thought I would introduce you to her and let you in on her story. Alex got diagnosed with fibromyalgia a couple years ago, and it's been a real struggle for her to find relief. Um, but yin yoga has been quite magical and helpful for her. So instead of me telling you all about her, here's my interview with Alex Chappelle. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Sally. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Thanks for coming today. I'm so glad to be here. Can you introduce yourself to everybody? Yes. And tell them a little about your story. Um, all right. So I have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. um, I got sick four years ago. Um, and it was pretty devastating because I had spent so much time of my life being very active. And all of a sudden, I couldn't be that person anymore. So, I was the typical idea of healthy. Mm. Um, looking back, I wouldn't say that... I wouldn't say that I was. Mm -hmm. But... I was um, working out twice a day, and I was eating really healthy, um, whatever that means, and I was working at an awesome job, and I had a great boyfriend, and a fun apartment, and like everything that 18-year-old um, Alex would have been like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, we're doing it up. Uh -huh. um, I had run my first 10K with my boyfriend, which is significant because um, I was in shape for that. A few months later, I ran a 5K, which is half that distance. Um, and the next day, so I could just tell something was wrong. I couldn't, I had no energy, I couldn't move. And usually, like, that's fine after a race. Mm -hmm. I just tried really hard. Right. <laughs> but one day turned into four days, turned into a month. Mm. And I had to sleep downstairs because I couldn't get up the stairs. And my boyfriend had to drive me to work. And my legs were shaking when I was in the shower. And I was in pain. And I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't drive. Um, mm. I went to a few doctors. I had so many tests done. And um, within six months, I finally saw a neurologist who said, I think you have fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of it. Okay, this is your life now. Yeah. Um, and that threw me into deep depression, mm -hmm. of course. So I felt disconnected from my body. I felt like I was grieving my life. I had everything, I felt like everything was taken away from me. I would lay in my bed and stare outside and just want to mm -hmm. walk my dog, hike a mountain, mm -hmm. or like be able to get a shower. Mm. And the doctor didn't really give you any hope, it sounds like. No, he had... He had a, an antidepressant that he wanted me to take. Oh, wow, that and, was the treatment. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that was kind of, that was it. Um, after a few years of depression and all of the terrible things that can come along with chronic illness, I started to find hope, which is so significant. It's so significant. Yeah. And uh, that literally comes from my experience with Yin. Mm -hmm. I have had days where I am laying down, doing my practice, and I'm just smiling because mm -hmm. a few years ago, this would not have happened. Yeah. 
we started working together maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. And you had introduced me to a pose or two, but I hadn't done a full practice. Mm -hmm. I had wanted to go to yoga classes and ha I had gone and I had left in tears because of the pain of just laying on the floor, if not even the movement, just being on the floor, I could not handle. So um, I didn't think there was any way that yoga was accessible to me. Mm -hmm. So about a year and a half ago, I took a yin class with um, a close friend, another one of your students. And with Sam. With Sam. Yeah. And she, because she was a friend and someone I felt very comfortable with, I knew that she understood what my body was going through and that I didn't have to force myself to be perfect and look like everyone else in the class. So she gave me the space to experience her class, experience her yoga, and I left feeling so empowered. Mm -hmm. Just after that first class. One class, and I believe it was an hour long. Mm -hmm. There were classes after that where I cried. There were classes after that where I was in pain. Yeah. But I felt so different and started reconnecting with my body. I felt like I could be a normal person. I could do yoga. Mm -hmm. I could let my body scream the pain at me and be there to comfort it instead of crying in the shower or trying to chug a bottle of wine. It, I, was, I felt so able to support my body in the pain and fatigue that was happening. And just doing that bit by bit changes who you are as a person and then changes the way that you interact with the world. It's amazing. And I never thought that I would say something like yin yoga has changed my life, but it really truly has to, to my, the core of who I am as a person. It's, rambling. <laughs> you're not, you're not rambling. And I think yin yoga has definitely changed my life and it changes so many people's lives even though our situations are different you know I came to yin yoga with a different story but the experiences you're having of being able to comfort your body I love how you said that that you were able to now comfort your body and be with it instead of chugging the wine or trying to like separate from our body I think that's what my story is and everyone else's that it teaches us how to just like I like to use this image a lot of making this big hug like hugging ourselves but um, it doesn't look like this it looks more like closed eyes being still and just allowing uncomfortable things to come up and I know I was never taught that that was how you love yourself yeah I didn't I thought it, it looked really different. I thought it was about improving myself or getting better, more positive. So I love that you're speaking to that self-love is actually letting those uncomfortable things be there. Yeah. Can you tell people how your body has changed? Because I know now, I mean, you're in the teacher training, you can be there for six hours, and that was two days in a two row. Two days in a row, that seemed impossible before. Yeah. If you told me last year that I would be able to do this, mm -hmm. sit from on the floor from noon to six, two days in a row, and not only that, but somehow drive an hour. Yeah. Right. Both ways. <laughs> That's a big deal. Um, I would have cried. And I want to cry now that I can do that. Because when I started to practice, something very, very slowly and profound began, began to fall into place with, with this idea of body acceptance and respect. 
And it's so different than this. We have this idea of that body love needs to be like, oh, I feel so sexy all of the time. Right. And I love everything I see in the mirror, right. which is not true. It, and that's another like version of perfection for us to reach. But being with our bodies and starting to just really say, I love you and I'm here for you and I don't care what's in the mirror. Yeah. If I feel uncomfortable, I don't have to attack myself because of it. So this, this big profound thing started to, to click into place and every other aspect of my life changed because I was learning how to, to listen to my body and respect it. Mm -hmm. I started telling friends, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't be there on Friday night because mm -hmm. I just had a hard day and a long week and I love you, mm -hmm. but I need to be here and that's okay. And, and not grieving anything that I'm missing because I'm actually doing this amazing thing for my body. Mm -hmm. And when you get sick and have to start canceling things, that's terrifying. If you don't show up, are people going to forget you? Are you going to matter anymore? Are you going to lose friendships? Um, but people tend to really respect when you have healthy boundaries for yourself. Mm -hmm. So beginning my practice of yin yoga has led to healthy boundaries for myself. Mm -hmm which then has helped my body to start to have some space to kind of feel like we can spend our energy in this way and it's not dangerous because we're not spread thin everywhere mm -hmm. else. So it's, it's been this beautiful relationship of me learning how to, yeah, how to provide the nourishment emotionally, physically, with my diet, like everything. Mm -hmm so that I can now sit in a studio for this long. And that's not to say that days are perfect, right? but that's not, li like life's not perfect. Yeah, it's okay now. But it's so different, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't feel like othered. I don't mm. feel like an out, like a, a person that like can't fit in. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have possibility. I have this possibility that I can share yin with the world. I have this possibility that I can be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can go to chronic illness support groups and tell them about this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's empowering. It's just like pure, and it's born from yin yoga. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it seems like such a simple thing, you know, yin yeah. yoga, especially when you look at it from the outside. Like when I used to teach at a gym, I would think, gosh, if, if someone walked by, because people pop in every so often to tour the gym, and I think, okay, they're, they look through the window and they see everyone lying on the floor doing nothing. <laughs> and then <laughs> if they were to hear that it changes your whole life, right? your levels of pain, your energy levels, your outlook on yourself, your body image, your um, ability to set boundaries, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy. Yeah. It sounds literally <laughs> crazy just even listing the things that have changed. Yeah. And I think the most important thing that I want people to know is how accessible it is. Mm -hmm. That I have days where my yin yoga posture is in bed with just a ton of pillows and blankets. Yep. And that's what it looks like for me. And it's it still makes such a difference. Yeah, let's talk about that a little more because mm -hmm. I know one of the things that keeps people from coming to yin yoga public classes or any kind of yoga class is this huge intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. Some people get intimidated because their bodies don't look like what everyone else's look like, but some people don't come because they don't have the right clothes or they feel like they're too inflexible. I hear that more often than yeah. anything else. So can you tell us a little about what your practice looks like? So sometimes it's in bed for five minutes or something? Yeah. So especially in the beginning, my practice looked like as many pillows as I could find, as many blankets as I could find, either on a couch or in bed. And what poses did and you do? And I would do, honestly, some days was just shavasana, yeah. just corpse pose, just laying. Yeah. And yes, that makes a difference. Right. Some days, then I would move to reclined butterfly and just let my knees fall to the side with mm -hmm. a ton of blankets. Yeah. 
So now do you do um, one pose a day? Is that your routine? Or do you have I a different pose? that question. <laughs> I love that question. Um, I try to take a very yin yoga approach to my practice. Yeah. So my, my favorite thing to do after work is to not have any, no TV, cell phone is away, and I bring out all of my props, uh-huh. and I just do whatever feels good. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time right now, it's a wide knee child's pose mm-hmm. um, with a, a bolster underneath my stomach. Um, my knees and my hips are still very tight. And um, I've gotten into this amazing place where, for the first time, my feet don't fall asleep, so I can stay in that pose for just forever. Wow. Uh, That's and exciting. <laughs> it is. It really is. It is. <laughs> so um, that's one that I'll do a lot. And I also really enjoy um, anything that's laying down. Yeah. So I'll put a block underneath uh, my back for heart bench. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. lay there. And my amazing boyfriend got me a weighted blanket, so Shavasana just looks like... It's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so to answer your question, I'll, I'll start with one pose. Mm-hmm. And um, if I'm feeling like I want another one, I'll do another one. And I could go for an hour. Mm-hmm. But I also might be struggling to sit with anxiety that day and right. might need to move on and just like... Maybe come back to it later, maybe mm-hmm. not. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay if it doesn't right. turn into an hour. Exactly, Yeah. because I'm still coming here. I'm still reminding my body, like, hello, I'm here for you. Yeah. And I'm, even if it's for these five minutes, I'm going to listen to you mm-hmm. as hard as I can. I don't know if you found this, but now that I, now that I can sit with it, mm-hmm. it's... It doesn't drag out into this long, painful thing. Right. If I'm having a really, really bad bout of anxiety, yeah. it's I don't have to know why. It's okay. This is just where we are right now. Let's mm-hmm. go take a hot shower and just like breathe. And it's gone quicker because I'm not suffering through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have that experience all the time. And sometimes it's still hard because, you know there'll be a particularly strong anxiety or a particularly deep loneliness or something. And it's like, there's, there's still a part of me that wants to try the exact opposite way and run. But I think yin yoga and meditation teach you that things pass. So there's a little bit more willingness to, to turn toward the uncomfortable thing because some part of you knows it's only temporary. Yeah. And that there will be a tomorrow, or there will be a happy moment, or you will be able to get outside after it stops raining and, and walk in the sun again. I'm really having this conversation. I'm really glad we're having this conversation mm-hmm. because you just reminded me of something very important mm-hmm. that I wanted to say. Yeah, please. One of my first experiences with yin, I had a panic attack. Oh, wow. Because. I had learned not to listen to what my body was telling me. Mm-hmm. I didn't trust it. Yeah. You're telling me that we're in pain. I know we're not in pain. I'm not listening to you. Mm-hmm. I have X, Y, and Z to do today. Right. And I don't have time for this. Yeah. And I had done that for years. Mm-hmm. And so to sit and lay and invite yeah. the screaming of my body... My heart was pounding. I'm getting goosebumps just remembering it. Mm -hmm. My heart was pounding and I was like just breathing like I can't, I'm just overwhelmed by what's going on here. I cried. And then the next time it wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what what I hear you saying that is so important to share with everybody is sometimes it gets worse. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's getting worse. And really experientially it is. It's like you cry harder than you ever have, or you get a panic attack when you weren't getting them for a while. Right. Yeah. And maybe Western medicine or someone would say, oh, you're doing really well because you haven't had a panic attack in six months. And then you get one and you think something went wrong. Yeah. But it's not that something went wrong. It's that you gave yourself space to feel what's been wanting to be felt. Mm-hmm. And it was incredibly uncomfortable. That was exactly my experience. 
And I still have days like that. It's not scary. I don't have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. We know what this feels like, and and it's all right. Yeah. And we can cry, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Turn all the lights off. Put some candles. (laughs) Go in the shower. Just doing this now. 